Let's turn our Bibles to book of Luke, Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. We're going to look at verse 23. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. The title of the message is, Who will you follow today? Who will you follow today? Luke chapter 9, verse 23. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Pastor Shrive, would you please pray for the message? Father, we pray that you bless each and every individual here and draw us closer to you than ever before. And we'll give all the praise to you and thanks to you. Bless our brother, Lord, as he brings the word of God to our hearts. In Jesus' lovely name we pray. Amen. 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 Who will you follow today? Each day, you and I wake up and we have decisions to make. We have choices, and we can follow someone that day. And it starts from the beginning. You have to make a commitment, and you have to make a decision that day who you're going to follow. If you do not make a decision on that day who you will follow, what happens is that you're going to follow your circumstances. You're going to follow whoever you think is more advantageous to you whenever it is. We all know that we want to follow Lord Jesus Christ. That's our goal in our life. We want to follow Lord Jesus Christ no matter what happens. However, that's not the case. You and I know very well that we don't follow the Lord like we should on a daily basis. If we did, then we wouldn't fall into so many temptations. We wouldn't fall into so many discouraging, you know, I guess, ways. We wouldn't fall into lazy ways. You and I need to recognize and realize that we need to make a decision each day, each morning, right when you wake up, who you will follow today. And in order to follow Lord Jesus Christ, there's always prerequisite, right? Number one thing is that you have to get saved. Now, without saying... You need to become child of God in order to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, if you haven't, you know, accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you know, you must realize you are a sinner on your way to hell, right? I mean, who can actually say that I don't deserve to burn in hell when you think about everything that you've done? It's not about going out there and committing murder. It's not about going out there and doing hideous acts on someone. Your envy, your jealousy, your hatred, all those true thoughts, they're all sin. And in front of an almighty God, can you honestly say that I'm sinless? Of course not. You and I, we're all sinners. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. Isaiah, chapter 40. It is important, before you get saved and after you get saved, to realize that you are nothing. When you think you're something, that's when you won't follow the Lord. You're going to start following yourself, the world, Satan, everything else. That's why it is very important On a daily basis, when we wake up, we tell ourselves, but it's got to be rooted from your heart, that I am nothing. I'm nothing. Look at Isaiah chapter 40, verse 17. The Bible says, All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. Think about it. I mean, that's the type of attitude you and I should have. You're like, isn't that negative? Isn't that too, you know, dejected, dejecting? No. This is 
the way for your betterment. You need to realize that you are nothing. You know, besides from, aside from the Lord Jesus Christ, you and I are nothing. You and I cannot accomplish anything without the Lord Jesus Christ. And in order for you to get saved, you must realize that you are nothing. You're just a sinner on your way to hell. And you realize that. And you have willing to turn from your ways, willing to turn from your sins with repenting heart. And you're going to the Lord. Lord, I'm a sinner on my way to hell. I turn to you. I want you to save me. Amen. With that heart, and when you receive Jesus Christ, like according to Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved, then the Bible says you have eternal life. Because the Bible says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So you must be saved in order for you to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. You could say, I'm following the Lord, not knowing you're saved, not accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yeah, you're following the Lord. You're Lord the devil. So a lot of times people forget. You either serve the Lord Jesus Christ or you serve the devil. Because at the end of the day, when you're serving yourself, you're serving the devil. That's what devil loves. That's why it's very important for Christians to recognize that on a daily basis, when you wake up, you have to make a commitment. I will serve the Lord today. Because too many, because it's from my own experience, too many Christians go on each day, especially like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you know, before Sunday, you think that, you know what? I'm just gonna live a regular normal day. I just wake up, do my thing, go to school, go to work, you know, whatever I need to do, and you just end the day. But however, when you look back, I mean, have you really followed the Lord on those days? Most likely not, you know, because when your heart's not dedicated to the Lord on a daily basis, you cannot serve Him fully on a daily basis. Turn your Bibles to Joshua, Joshua chapter 14. Let's look at good example from the Bible. Who was a good example that we could follow? Joshua chapter 14. We look at Caleb here. Caleb, not Brother Caleb up here, but we look at the Caleb in the Word of God. And, you know, I think Caleb has this kind of character as well. Joshua chapter 14, verse 8. This is Caleb speaking. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. Look at verse 14. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenesite, unto this day, because that he wholly Again, the word is holy because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. We know, you know, when they, those spies went out, besides from Joshua and Caleb, they all were melted. You know, they were scared. Why? Because they did not wholly follow the Lord. Again, it is imperative, it's very important that you examine your heart on a daily basis. Am I following the Lord wholly? Am I truly dedicating my all to the Lord wholly on a daily basis? I guarantee you, Joshua, I guarantee you, Caleb, Moses, they follow the Lord wholly. You know, when you think about the word holy, what does it remind you? You know, what comes to your head? The whole thing, right? When you're eating a donut, do you want to eat just the parts of it? No, you want to eat the whole thing. For some, you know, especially young people, older people as well, when you have your personal size pizza, right? We're not talking about extra large pizza. 
You know, you go to some pizza places and you order a personal sized pizza. It's perfect for you. And you're very hungry, right? And when someone comes, hey, can I have half of your pizza? And you're looking at your pizza, it's only this big. And you're, you give him, you know, those dumbfounded look, right? Are you serious, you know? I mean, but you like holy. You like, you like the whole things. And you're working. When you get paid, you want to pay it whole, right? You don't want to get, you don't want to get paid partial. You know, you work for a thousand bucks and then you get paid partial for like 500 bucks. They're like, what happened to my 500 bucks? And of course that happens with your taxes, right? But you know, beside from that, everybody wants things that are whole. Kids love toys. Girls, everybody loves dolls, right? When you're little, do you want to receive your doll without arms? Without your legs? Without hair? No. Without a nose? Without an eye? No, you want the whole thing. You want your cars without, with the wheels missing, boys, girls, you know, when you're playing with you know, racing cars? No, you want the whole thing. Then, if you yourself like things whole, you yourself like things being holy, right? Don't you think God expects you to be whole? Don't you think God expects you to give yourself wholly to Him? There shouldn't be a time where you go, Lord, I'm only going to give you 90% of my pizza. Other 10, I'm going to give it to my worldly friends. I'm going to give it to the devil. And I'm going to give it to, you know, for my pleasure. I mean, the Bible says little leaven, leaven is the whole thing, right? That little thing is going to pollute the whole thing. That's why when you look at your day, when you don't follow the Lord 100%, when you don't give yourself to the Lord wholly to Him 100%, what happens? Something's going to come in, and it's going to poison it. Unfortunately, your day could have been perfect. However, because you let some poison, pollution, worldly things, your lust come into your life, and because the fact that you did not wholly dedicate yourself, gave your heart to the Lord, what happens? It ruins it at the end of the day. Man, think about it. I'm looking at this great hamburger, juicy hamburger, you know, double patty with cheese, you know, everything that you like. And then you see the juices flowing, right? Angus beef or Wagyu beef, you know, real good beef. For most people, because there are crazy people out there, but most people, if someone spits on your food, it's hard for you to eat it, right? If someone forgets to close their mouth and they sneeze, and they sneeze all over your burger, and burger wasn't even closed with the bun, it's still open, you know? And then, wow, it's, and then you could see, you know, those slow motion that you see, even though it's happening in real motion time, you see this, you know, bunch of, you know, this wet stuff going onto your burger. And you have a choice. And 99 out of 100 percent will be like, you know, people will be like, nah, I'm not going to eat that. You go eat it, right? So you lost it, right? Just because of the little things, you know. If, they, if there was fly on it, right, so a lot of people wouldn't eat it either. But there are some few who will still eat it no matter what, right? They wouldn't care, right? You know, and they're not normal, right? You know, but, but as far as normal people are concerned, you know, when those things happen, you wouldn't eat it. I mean, if we go even beyond a little further, you know, you're putting some red poison around your houses, and then someone accidentally, because they have butterfingers, dropped partial of red poison on your burger. At that point, not even crazy people will eat it because there's a chance that you'll die or you get really sick. Then when you look at your day, even today, it's Sunday, you know, you kind of make it more holier day than the other day. Think about how you started today. Did you wake up and have a conversation with the Lord that I will wholly follow you today? Lord, help me to wholly follow you today. If you haven't, I guarantee you, you're not following holy today because you haven't even dedicated, you haven't even put all your heart into it. Your heart has to be rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you have to be realizing that, you know what? 
If I do not wholly follow the Lord today, who am I going to follow? Right? Who else am I going to follow? Who else am I going to follow and disappoint the Lord? Who else am I going to follow and make Holy Spirit be sad? Who? The devil, the world, and yourself. That's why when the days where you, are, you feel like you're really close to the Lord, maybe without even knowing, you're like, you know what? I'm going to you know, really dedicate myself to the Lord today. I mean, there are certain days where you're reading your Bible a lot better than the other days. I mean, I'm reading 50 chapters today when reading like a three chapter is so hard, you know? I'm like, man, I love passing out tracts today. Man, I want to talk to people about Lord Jesus Christ today. And certain days you're like, oh man, it's really hard. And I have these tracts and everything. You know, I'll just give it to him next time. I'll just give it to her next time. Oh man, the word of God, man. Uh, it's so hard to read today. Why does that happen continuously in your life? Because you have not dedicated that day to serve the Lord and follow the Lord. And when that happens, it becomes very, very easy for devil to attack you. It becomes very, very easy for your flesh to just give up. Like, you know what? I don't want to do anything of the Lord today. Your old nature is keep on telling you. Don't do anything for the Lord today. You have other days to do it. And then what happens? Your zeal disappears. Your fervent prayers disappear. So what happens? You used to be that someone, especially, you know, when people get saved, they're really fired up for the Lord. Especially after like a summer camp, after like a blowout, after, you know, say rededication and commitment, people get fired up. But time passes by. And then you look at yourself, the day you got saved and following that day, about a week, month, or year, compared to now, and the summer camp, look about a week and like month after, you're at a worse place. You're not the same. You do less for the Lord than even before you went to the camp blowout events. Why is that? You know why? Because you're not wholly following the Lord each day. You have not dedicated yourself each day to the Lord. How do you think you could survive in this, you know, God forsaken, you know, devil worshiping, you know, getting weak, I mean, wicked, wickeder, wickeder world today without committing all of yourself, all of your heart to the Lord on a daily basis? That's why some of you fall to temptation more easily. That's why some of you have less joy than others. That's why some of you, whenever something bad happens in your life, you start blaming everybody else, right? It's a very good example. When something doesn't go your way in your daily life, whether it's financially, whether it's emotionally, mentally, whether it's anything to do with your work or you know, school and stuff, think about how you react. Do you suddenly get discouraged? You start blaming others? Or you start, you know, for some, you get self-pity. Like, why does this happen to me? And you start comparing yourself to others. When others are living so well, why do I live like this, you know, in whatever the situation is, in difficulty, poverty, pain, and suffering? What do you do? If you get discouraged easily, get angry, and all that stuff, that means that you're not following the Lord. That means you're following yourself, you're the devil, and the world. Simple as that. There's only two choices. Either you follow the Lord, or you follow everything else. When that happens, what happens? God is not your God. Lord Jesus Christ is not your God. Everything else is your God, and you become idolater. You're like, oh man, what happens to people who commit idolatry? You know, especially in the Old Testament, you know, they were killed. But thank God that you and I live in this age of grace, right? Church age, where God doesn't judge us right away. Where God doesn't, you know, send us, you know, to help for our, you know, sins that we commit. And if we don't go to the priest and get it, you know, forgiven through 
burnt offerings. Thank God for that. We don't have to, you know, live in the law. However, your Christian state will be determined based on, you know, how many days you commit to the Lord. We hear this term, right? You know, you know Pastor Kim's preaching, or he preached about, you know, you know, things of Holy Spirit for Saturday ministry, right, for Korean people. And it was profound. It was, I mean, it was very profound to hear, you know, one of the best preachings that I've ever heard from his mouth, right? You know, Lord talks to him, and, you know, I've been coming to our church for, what, like 23 years plus. And it dawned on me, why is it that so many people do not live for the Lord? Why is it that so-called people who go to church for many, many years do not serve Him like they should? I look at my own life. Why did I have those up and downs in my life? Why did I, you know, have those, you know, days of backsliding? And he kind of answered all the questions through his preaching. Let's turn our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. If you're struggling in your Christian walk in any way, there's a solution. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to look at verse 18. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. The Bible says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is access, but be filled with the Spirit. So in order for you to wholly follow the Lord, there's one thing that's got to happen in your life. You have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And getting, being filled with the Holy Spirit is not speaking in tongues, right? Like those charismatics do. It's not about, you know, doing praise and worship, you know, jumping up and down like in a concert. No, being filled with the Holy Spirit simply means that you are controlled by the Holy Spirit. You let Holy Spirit control everything. When you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, then what controls you? Your flesh. Your flesh controls you. And what's flesh related to? The world, sin, the devil. Simple as that. Then how can you be filled with the Holy Spirit? How can you let Holy Spirit control you? How can your life be filled with the Holy Spirit control life? Answer, from your bottom of heart, each day you pray to God that you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You have to ask. It's a command. You know, Bible, Ephesians 5, 18 doesn't say, try to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Do your best to be filled with the Holy Ghost. No. Bible says, but be filled with the Spirit. It's a command. Then if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, then you're committing sin. How many times have you think, now remember, I mean, for some, you've been saved for like 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, right? Think about it. And for some, you've been a new Christian. Think about it. How many times, how many days, how many hours, how many years do you think that you weren't filled with the Holy Spirit? Probably countless. You can't even go back and count those days. Man, you know what would be good? You confess your sins to the Lord and get right with the Lord. The days that you weren't filled with the Holy Ghost. You have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Then how do you do it? You have to want it. And you have to want it from your bottom of your heart. And you have to ground it into it. That's why it is very important that you ask yourself on a daily basis, especially when you wake up, who will I follow today? Why? Do you know why that question is very important? It puts you on a spot that you could always fall. It puts you on a vulnerable spot where you could always not follow the Lord Jesus Christ. It puts you on a spot to remember that you're nothing, right? If I follow the Lord yesterday, doesn't mean that I'm going to follow the Lord today. That's how wicked I am. I am nothing. When I think I'm something where, you know what? I've been following the Lord 
you know, I had, you know, a lot of fruits. You know, a lot of people got saved, you know, through, you know, me talking to them, witnessing, you know, I'm, I'm having the fruit of the Holy Spirit, you know, I feel good. That's when that pride gets in and then you'll fall. It's so true what the Bible says, right? Proverbs 16, 18, pride goes before destruction and the Holy Spirit before a fall. That's why you have to constantly, always maintain your humble heart. In order to follow the Lord wholly, you have to be humble. And what does humble mean? According to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 17, it means that knowing that and realizing that rooted in your heart, constantly reminding yourself when the flesh says otherwise that you are nothing. You know, when flesh tells you something, that, hey, you're something, you're smart, you're good looking, you're pretty, you know, you know you're better than the person over there, you know, so and so, just tell him. In the flesh, you need to shut your mouth because I am nothing. Then there will be less jealousy, less envy, less hatred, all of those sins, right, that comes along with it. When something good is happening to brethren, it behooves me to understand and think that, why are you jealous? Why are you envious when something good happens to your brethren, right? You know, it's like, is it because you didn't get the 500 bucks that other person get, gotten? I mean, is that money that important to you? Uh, you know, it's like someone says they look better. You're like, oh man, I look better than that person. How dare they say? Or you're like, how come they didn't tell me that I'm a pretty person? You know, I'm a good looking person. I stood next to each other. I mean, the petty things that people can say and think and do but it is something that goes on each Christian's life on a daily basis when you do not ask the Lord and when your heart is not grounded where, you know what, I am nothing. I must follow the Lord today. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost today. I want Holy Spirit to control me all day every second, and I don't want my flesh to control me, right? Even the lights realizing it, right? <laughs> you know, it just went up, right? I mean, you do not want your flesh, you do not want flesh-controlled life. That's opposite of spirit-filled life. And if you continue to read, like, Ephesians, Galatians, you know, all the Polina epistles, you'll see all those sins, those are listed, right? When you are filled with your flesh, your lust, you know, then only fruit that you're going to bear is sinful fruits. The result of spirit-filled life is what? You have fruits where you have a, you know, Holy Spirit fruit, right? Like according to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. And also you have a fruit of leading people to the Lord. That's why some of you, you, you know who you are. When you do not dedicate your day each day to the Lord, when you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, there's no fruit when it comes to lost souls out there. You don't pass out tracts. You don't pray for the lost souls, right? You don't talk to people about, you know, the gospel. How can you? Your flesh doesn't want to talk about it. Devil doesn't want to talk about it. The world doesn't want to talk about it. It just tells you that, you know what? You've been filled with your flesh. You've been filled with the devilish things and worldly things. Then you must wake up. You have to realize, man, I've been a mess. I've been, going, I've been a church goer. I've been saved for many, many years. But I haven't really asked the Lord to fill me with the Holy Ghost. I haven't really wholly decided to follow the Lord on a daily basis. That's why when Holy Spirit pricks you, convicts you through the Word of God, through preaching, you have to change. 
you have to make a commitment. Because best way for you and I to change is when we hear strong preaching and when we read the Word of God, we get convicted, get right with the Lord. Then that's good. However, too many people reject it. Too many people go on their way, same way. And then what happens? God as a loving Father has to punish you. Do you want that? Do you want to change after you get punished? Now, I certainly don't. You know, it happened to me in the past, man, but I don't want to go through the pain and suffering and then, you know, making a long detour when it comes to serving the Lord, losing those many days and hours and years because of my sinful ways. No, I want to change right now through the Word of God, through strong preaching. You know what? I want to really rededicate my heart to the Lord. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, and I don't want my flesh to control me anymore. I want Holy Spirit to control me. Then when you do that on a daily basis, then you will truly understand what the Spirit-filled life is. Every eye closed, every head bowed. You know, we go each day, if Joanna will come up, you know, we're going to have a, we don't have too many altar calls, but we're going to have an altar call today. You know, it's time that you, you know, make a dedication. You examine your heart and you truly see where your heart is at. And if you have been suffering, if you have been struggling, it is time for you to really get right with the Lord. It is time for you to decide whom you will serve today. Is it going to be the Lord Jesus Christ? Or is it going to be your flesh? Is it going to be the devil? Or is it going to be the world? It's time for you to really, you know, tear your heart from the bottom of your heart. Really, Lord, I've been a sinner. I did not recognize that I am worse than nothing, like Isaiah 40, 17. You know, it's, you converse with the Lord. You talk to the Lord like, Man, Lord, I've been such a fool. Why did I think that I'm something when I'm nothing, right? When you and I truly realize that we're nothing, that's when Lord can work in your life. That's when Lord can work in your heart. That's when people can get saved through your life's ministry reason there's no fruit in your life is because you're serving the long, wrong Lord. You're serving your flesh, the devil, and the world instead of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that amazing? Think about those days when you just got saved. You were so excited that the Lord saved you from hell. And you were so excited to go out there and tell others about Lord Jesus Christ. You couldn't start the day without the Word of God. You couldn't end the day without the Word of God. You couldn't just stay still without passing out a track or telling people about Lord Jesus Christ. You couldn't wait to have, you know, godly fellowship with your brethren. You remember those days. Those days were when you were filled with the Holy Ghost. Those days were when you actually followed the, followed the Lord on a daily basis. Those days when you realized you were nothing. However, there are so few very, there are so few those days that you could look for in your life nowadays. Things of the world, concerns of this world are consuming you. You're being controlled by your flesh. You let flesh control you. I mean, think about it, the judgment seat of Christ. When you see all those days, all those times, you rejected the Lord and you served your flesh. When you sinned against Ephesians 5.18, when the Lord says, but be filled with the Spirit. Wouldn't you want to be filled with the Spirit on a daily basis? Wouldn't you want to bear those fruit of the Holy Ghost? Wouldn't you want to be where, man, you're so excited to serve the Lord again? Thank God that God is God of many, many chances. Not just one, not just two, not just three. Then you and I will be all dead. But He's God of many, many, many chances. When God gives you a chance to get right, 
when God gives you chance to right the ship and go sailing better again, it's time for you to get right with the Lord and go the right path. And starting right now, starting tomorrow, let's really dedicate each day to the Lord. Let our heart be filled with the Holy Ghost. Ask the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost and make sure that you are following the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you are following Lord Jesus Christ, being filled with the Holy Ghost, realizing you're nothing, your life will be full of joy, your life will be full of peace, your life will be full of blessings. Not just, we're not talking about physical blessings per se, spiritual blessings. Imagine that, living each day joyfully, serving the Lord, having your heart grounded in the Holy Ghost, and saying no to your flesh, Man, as you become more victorious, as you get more victory and victory, you'll find more confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like Apostle Paul said, you know, when I'm weak, I'm strong. And you really realize that, man, when I'm weak, when I know I'm nothing, only Lord can do it. You do your best with it. Man, you're going to have this spirit-filled life. Thank God that He has given us this conviction and challenge through the Word of God and through preaching. And I pray that all of us will really get right with the Lord and start living a life filled with the Holy Ghost.